Remember the Renault Clio RS16? It was a concept car, a birthday present that Renault wanted to give to itself to celebrate 40 years of Renault Sport. It was intended to be the fastest, most powerful, most hardcore small hot hatch ever, powered by the same engine as the Megane RS, with a proper six-speed manual gearbox, a limited slip differential, and a big wing out the back. Simply put, it was pretty awesome. But then the Alpine A110 happened, which is currently being produced at the same factory that this was made to be made at. Renault couldn't do both, and so it thought, it's only a concept, right? But don't look so glum, chum, because it's not all bad news. You see, to soften the blow, Renault instead decided to add the 220 Trophy as a proper addition to the Clio Renault Sport range. So along with a slightly updated and facelifted appearance, it's also got the same chequered flag DRLs and the same carbon-tipped Akrapovic exhaust as the RS16 was supposed to have. Hmm. So we have previously driven this car back whenever it was still strictly limited edition, but in a nutshell, the Renault Sport Clio is a much more hardcore alternative to the likes of your Ford Fiesta ST, Peugeot 208 GTI, the Mini Cooper S and whatever else you have, while the Trophy 220 is the hardest cored Clio of them all. It's powered by an upgraded version of the same 1.6 litre turbo 4 as the regular Renault Sport Clio, and although it lacks much of the charisma of the old highly strung naturally aspirated engines and fast Clios of yore, it makes up for it in terms of sheer power. 217 brake horsepower compared to 197 in the regular Clio RS. Now that is exactly the same as the previous Trophy 220, so it's still 0 to 62 in 6.6 .6 seconds. There's still a top speed of 146 miles per hour, and boo hiss says the enthusiasts. It's still strictly dual clutch auto only. Overall, it is a pretty controversial car, and to be honest, I can kind of see why. I mean, for example, the steering isn't particularly feelsome. In fact, it's well, it's quite dead actually, but it's really quick and it's really consistent. The chassis feels really good, and on the right road and in the right conditions, this car really sparkles in terms of handling. But the stiff springs and dampers make it much too busy a ride for everyday use. Likewise, the engine delivers its power well, and the car is undeniably quick, but it just sounds a bit, yeah. To be fair, the optional exhaust does go a long way towards fixing that. Parps and upshifts, crackles and downshifts, and all the chatter that you get off throttle, even low down in the rev range. Some people have criticised this car for being a bit bland to drive, while others still have criticised it for being too hardcore, but I think that this is one of those cars that really hangs on its drive modes. In normal and even in sport, it can feel a bit gloopy and the gear shifts a bit woolly, but it really feels like it wakes up whenever you shift the shifter into manual, hold the button and turn it into race mode. Off goes the traction control, up goes the throttle response, and the gear shifts also become a lot faster as well. You'll need your brave pills, but this is one of those cars that really only comes to life whenever you properly stand on it. It's one of those that really rewards what the Finns refer to as Sisu, balls basically. You see, Renault's attempt to make this as much like a proper little racing car as possible has definitely blunted its fun factor, or perhaps more accurately, its accessible fun factor. It's a car that rewards commitment, and surely while that will probably turn quite a few people off, on the flip side, it'll turn quite a few onto it as well. It's a car that you really have to get into a rhythm with to drive, but it'll act the scamp with the best of them, even if it takes a little bit of coercion. Inside the cabin's okay, if a little bit nondescript, I think. There are these leather sports seats, though, which clamp you in position nicely, and which lend a sort of motorsport vibe. Well, there's also these red touches, along with the red seat belts. Along with that, you've got a 7-inch touchscreen, which works well, along with kit like DAB radio, all-round parking sensors, and a reversing camera, which makes things just a little bit easier. There are a few niggles, though, like the way the infotainment screen insists on doing this little jazz hands flare thing every time you swap a mode. It's particularly frustrating whenever you put it into reverse, and you have to wait on it to do its thing before it gets to the camera. If you prod the screen here, however, it swaps to the handy Renault Sport monitor after it's 
clicked on its little thing, of course, and which you can use to record everything from lap times to oil temperature, steering input, turbo boost pressure, and even G-forces. There's also plenty of space. There's three cup holders here, plenty of room for your phone, and decent sized door bins, although the glove box is a little bit weenie on it. All Clio's these days are five doors, so that makes getting in and out easy. There's not a huge amount of leg or headroom in here, but it's probably all right for short journeys. Its 300 litre boot puts it near the top of the class in terms of practicality, and while yes, there are more practical super minis, there aren't many that go with this turn of pace. Praised and maligned in seemingly equal measure, I have to say that the Trophy 220 is a lot of fun in the right conditions, and I reckon it would make a proper little track monster, something which I'm sure plenty of owners will end up using it for. It's not all that practical, and it's not particularly pretty either, but it rewards the maximum attack approach, and for that you'll either love it, or you'll hate it. But what do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Done. Let's go home. <laughs>